What is up, App Nation? Welcome to another YouTube live stream. Super excited to have you guys. So thankful and grateful that you guys join us every single week where we kind of share with you what's been working in the app space, answer any of your questions. And obviously, I think this is what most people come for, auditing your apps. And so I do have a special guest today. We're having some technical problems. So hopefully she can hop on. But she's phenomenal in terms of helping game developers really grow their revenues and their monetization strategies. And so I was hoping, hopefully she'll come on. She's there right now on StreamYard. But if you haven't said hi in the comments below, make sure you do that. And so I want to give a shout out. Nidia says, hi, Eric. I'm not Eric Nidia. We look completely different, but he is on a different channel. You might want to check him out, Overpass Apps. We do something similar. We're always going live on at the same time. It's just most convenient for me on Fridays at 9 a.m. I think he's been doing it for a while now, but he and I should do something together. Moonshades, always good to see you, man. Demetrios, how's it going, brother? Thank you guys for joining. I want to get into a couple of things as we wait for Zinio, and I want to show you what's on the lineup. So Parab is here. What's happening? Let me do this real quick with you guys and show with share with you what's on the lineup here. Let me change all that stuff around. There, <laughs> that's better. I've got my Android phone. There's a couple of things on the Android stuff that I want to share with you guys. So I apologize. I was slacking a little bit. I didn't get to tell all the developers that their apps were going to be audited, but we're going to take a look at Drip Drop, Super Mama, the games. Since Zeno is on, I wanted to really talk about the game side of things. So we got a few games, and then we're going to kind of answer any of your questions you have for us. Okay. So that's what's on the deck. And if Zeno can join us, great. If she can't, we'll make it work regardless because you know me, I'll make it work. All right, let me go back to this and see if she's able to. Leandro, all right, wouldn't have been the same without you guys. I love the, the same people show up every single week. So one of the things I want to get into as we see if Zeno can come on is Android ASO. And there's been a couple of people that have asked me, hey, can you share a case study of Android where you kind of take a app that's like less than a thousand all the way to everything else. And you know what? I'm very interested in that now. So if you've got an Android app that is less than a thousand downloads, and the key thing is you have a thousand dollars to spend. Now that thousand dollars is not going to be towards me. It's going to be spent towards some of the marketing activities. So if you've got a thousand dollars to invest, then let's put a case study together because there's some things that I really want to discuss with you guys here. So the main thing is with Android, yeah, Rich Tech, it is a little laggy. I can try getting in there and seeing if that fixes stuff, but I don't know how to, without me leaving, I don't know how to fix it. So it is a little bit laggy for me too. All right, I apologize. Uh, okay, so one thing I want to really talk about with Android is this. Let me go to the, where's my Android store? Okay, don't use it. So I think the key with Android ASO is the reviews, the main things are going to be the reviews, the app icon, and the download, right? Because when I search, let's just search for a keyword. And if there's a keyword that you guys hear, I have soccer games. There you go. So as you can see, the main things that are showing up in the search results, these icons are tiny. Now, I have this Moto G6 phone, but the icons are very tiny. So you want to ma really make sure that your characters are up front and center. And then the second thing you guys can see is look at the main stuff. It's the, the ratings, it's the downloads. And then I don't know how they got this new thing, but that's maybe something that Android put in, but the app name, right? So the short description, the screenshots, none of that really matters in trying to capture the user's attention. So this is why I want to work with somebody to look, you have to have a thousand dollar budget. Somebody did email me asking for this case study. So I'm going to see that, but I want to use that $1,000 to run different growth hacks and get us to, you know, a reputable download number and obviously the ratings. So I just sort of want to hack a few things together that can we make an app grow with a thousand dollars with just, just that alone. So that's where I kind of want to point to because that's what I've seen. Like what we've seen on the Android side too is 
we've seen pretty good results within a client of ours. We've been actually able to get him to be number one for a very competitive keyword. And I'm going to share a case study on this. Unfortunately, it is going to be on the App Masters Academy, but it's a it's a brand new video where we're going to kind of tell you what did not work with ASO. And obviously, within the App Masters Academy, we're going to share what did work and what how we really got the app into number one for some of these terms. But I think it'll be clear because I think a lot of times with ASO, we kind of go into this thing where should we be doing this? Should we be doing that? Should we be doing that? And I, I did this with the client. I did it all, right? We built backlinks. We did all these keyword optimizations. We did all these little growth hacks. I'm going to share with you what really worked and what did not work. What did not work would be the free stuff. What did work would be on the paid stuff. But that's just something that I'm very much interested in looking at, I'm not even showing you guys my screen. Here it is, all right? The, the ratings, the download numbers, editor's choice, those are the main things that are gonna show up. So if you got under a thousand, it's gonna be really hard for you to, one, rank for these keywords, and two, convince a user that you're worth tapping into as well. So if you got a thousand dollars, to spend, I'd love to work with you and let's see if we can take your 1,000 under under 1,000 and let's see if we can grow those downloads for that. All right, dude, <laughs> you, will, you guys are, it is laggy, so it's laggy for me too. It's laggy for me too, frankly, so I apologize. I can hop back out and hop back in, but I don't wanna do that. All right, so Moth, what's up, bro? Hello, bro, you are awesome, thank you. You are awesome for me, Moonshades. I know it's a little bit laggy, I can, might be a good time for me to jump off and jump back on, see what happens, but I'll say hi to a few more people. And then Aiden, what's happening, man? It's been a long time. I've seen your name. Otherwise, stormy London. Wow. It's gotta be cold. And then Andy, I know. Good morning from Southern California. I want to go back, man. The weather's pretty crappy here because of the fires. And so Andy's really teasing us. Blue skies and 75 out here. Patrick, sunny, but a little nippy here in central Illinois. Thank you guys for coming. If you got any questions for me, please leave it in. I see Zeno trying to really figure this out as well. Demetrios, I know I'm in I'm in my wife's office, actually. So we, we have an office that we rent out or she rents out, but I'm here. And so the internet's kind of a little bit crappy. Let me, let me do this. This might be a good break. Let's see if Zeno hops on. I'm going to return, see if I can fix this lagging issue. And then we'll get into the app audit and any questions you guys have from ASO growth and some of the things that we've been working on too. I'm going to share about the a YouTube influencer marketing stuff with you guys. So bear with me. Let's take a quick break, commercial break, and I'll be right back to see if I can't fix this lagging issue. And I'm back. How's that? I think it fixed. Is it, am I still lagging? Let me know. The camera's a little bit too low, but whatever. All right, cool. So the one of the things I want to talk about is YouTube influencer marketing. YouTube influencer marketing. We've got a video that I'm cutting up right now, but here's a little teaser for you guys for showing up live. I do believe from an influencer marketing perspective, the biggest bang for your buck right now is YouTube influencer marketing because I've seen, I've just heard it, you know, for me, I'm much better at, because of the podcast, because of the YouTube channel, because of the community that we have within App Masters Academy, I hear themes. And when like four or five people tell me the same stuff, different people that don't know each other, then I'm like, hmm, that's interesting, right? And that's how I sort of use like new ASO tools and all that stuff. So let me show you guys real quick, what I mean by this YouTube and thank you guys. And Merge is here. Thank you, Merge, for showing up. She's part of our team. But here's what I mean. I'm going to go to YouTube, right? Eric streaming as well. Good for you, Eric. But here's what I mean when I'm talking about YouTube influencer marketing. And so I have slides for this that I'm going to share with you in an upcoming video. But what you want to focus on are videos, if you're working with an influencer, that are going to be evergreen. So for example, working with an influencer, and we're trying to test this with a couple of different clients, but it's really, really hard. Essentially, here, I will give you how to modify Android. Here we 
for example. And I'm going to try to find the right one, but this is a better title. So one of my, my clients, he sponsored, and I do have a screenshot, just don't have it right here. He sponsored one of these videos where it said how to spot, how to edit your, your Android phone. And he's got a keyboard app and he said that it's an upcoming podcast. We've got a long list of buff podcast episodes. And so I want to release this early for you guys on YouTube. But he essentially said that he's like, look, this YouTube video outperformed any type of download campaign than anything else. Because the cool thing about a search volume like this, a search term like this, where if you can get it to rank, there's going to be people who are always searching for it, right? So that's why you want to try to go after these type of keywords. So evergreen type of videos are way better than, for example, he's got a keyboard app in, let's say, like top keyboard, keyboard, keyboard apps for Android that is trending. And in 2021, it might not, you might not show up anymore. So he did this as well, but he's like, look, this wasn't as great as saying like how to modify your Android phone, because that obviously makes sense, right? You have to modify your Android phone to use a keyboard. And so that that's what makes more sense. So YouTube influencer marketing. And I know the next question is going to be about like, Hey, how do I find these YouTube influencer influencers? It's literally like, hand-to-hand -hand combat because you, oops, shiz, guys, sorry. I am not even sharing my screen with you. Okay. Sorry, my fault. And I know there's a little bit laggy, but here's the thing. Top keyboard, keyboard apps for Android, not good to go after, but how to modify your Android phone. That's a great keyword to go after. And then finding these influencers who are creating these type of videos, reaching out to them and then having either through a sponsorship or paying for it, getting them to create your video and then plugging it. It's called a YouTube integration. Again, a YouTube video is going to come out pretty soon talking about this with clips. And I know I got some good feedback from the side hustle video where we kind of put together a few different clips from different podcast interviews into one video. And so it's going to be very similar to that, but give you some of the, the highlights of what's working and what's not from that side of things. All right. Uh, we're... Jasmine, are you here? Okay. Maybe not. I do see her there. All right. Let's see. Aiden asks, is it a good idea to use a Facebook group as a community space for your app IG where communities where users can comment and get feedback without leaving a review and have longer conversations? Yeah, Aiden, I think so. You know, I think any type, any way that you can build community within your app, it's going to keep people coming back into your app. I know we did this interview with Game Refining, Joel, and he talked about games. And it's like, what was the next phase of games? And he said social and community, right? Anytime you can have a community within your app, you're going to get people who really are loyal to your particular app and game. So community is huge. And if you use Facebook, that's going to be great as well. Cool. And what I love from you guys is you guys are here. What kind of topics you want me to cover in the next upcoming weeks? We're trying to really figure out the schedule for the next few weeks. And so if there's any people that you want on or any type of content that you want us to create, I know ASO topics are always going to do well, but you let me know in the comments below what kind of content you want me to create too. But let's get into this first app audit and I'll go into what the questions are. So we've got this drip drop drop, waste your time, watch videos without being spied on. Okay. Let me go into here. All right. Let's figure out what he wanted. So this is Jared's app. He says screenshots and keywords is the main thing for Jared. And since so screenshots. So Jared, like one thing is your, I don't know what the keywords you want to really try to rank for. So let me go through the app a little bit more. We're not going to self, self idolize. You're not downloading us to be inspired or to learn. Okay. We know you just need to waste time. So we designed dripped up around that. Create a timer for the amount of videos to watch, see how much time you've wasted, see how much time people have wasted on you, unlock achievements for racking up wasted time. You, seriously, it's just an app that focuses on wasting time? Us, yes, okay. So it looks like it's trendy videos. So if you're trying to really play up the wasting time, 
The keywords that I might be going after are not watch videos because you're going to be really competing with the big guys out there, right? It's YouTube, it's TikTok. Like what makes you different from all these other, vi other video streams that have tremendous audience and you don't. So that's one. The other thing is think about keywords like I'm bored. I know those tend to have volume. And so think about those type of keywords, like I'm bored, or maybe there's even keywords around earn money while walking, earn money while watching videos. So think about the earn money, even though you might not have the money thing, but those are type of keywords that I want to go after and waste your time in, in the, in the title is not good, right? That's, that's you're wasting your keywords. <laughs> and watch videos without being spied on. Again, this is great for your screenshots, but not great for here. Now, watch videos, waste time. That's not for me. Maybe I'm not your target audience, but for me, that's not a unique selling point. Why would I want to watch your videos? Right. So maybe it's see, you want to waste time. Like you said, it, I like your description. You want to waste time we have the most trending videos. It's like, okay, that's interesting. Like if you think about TikTok, they, they, st I love their branding. Now it's TikTok app store right here. Trends start here. Like boom, that is beautiful, right? Trends start here. Now, again, this is not obviously they're huge, so they don't need to worry about ASO as much, but that is a great tagline for your screenshot video for every move mood, watch wherever you go, discover trending channels. Like I might just think about how you, how TikTok is sort of branding themselves and use that in your screen, in your screenshots, because it looks like that's what you're trying to do is I've got spare moment. And frankly, Jared, when I thought about like, you want to waste time, like if I'm going to waste time, I'm probably going to, and watch videos, I'm probably going to go to TikTok because they got some funny videos. So how do you, differentiate yourself from TikTok, and then sort of how do you leverage the same branding they they've done a lot of a b tests i'm gonna assume and how do you leverage some of the words that they're already using into your screenshot all right hey bianca's here cool all right i know when i don't see the regular people uh, i get a little sad bianca i get a little sad all right let's get into drip drop and then see what he can improve within his app and if i was wrong with anything in terms of what the app actually does so let's do this Boop. all right you guys got my phone by the way as i'm waiting for this to load we do have a winner i asked you guys for your favorite breakfast last week i have them all i was going to do a draw <laughs> this on this live stream i'm going to do it next week but i it's on my different computer it's on my iMac and I'm on my MacBook Pro so here is my phone let's move this out of the way and I'm trying to center this but let's go big bro okay here you go all right here it is so let's take a look drip drop yeah it feels like TikTok I wonder if this is Jared I can't hear anything because obviously it's coming through here. Uh, I can't hear anything. Oh, it's going to auto. Whoops, my bad. There. Uh, microphone there. Let's see if that fixes stuff. No, we might be here. But... Yeah, there you go. We can hear some audio now. What's up guys uh i get a lot of comments about all these pesos that people have and people wanting to turn them into something else here's how you do it you got a little uh five cent peso or whatever and then just turn that into a purple lighter also someone posted on my uh, drip drop last week at a bar uh, them doing a handstand this is all about magic and fun and being funny i'm super funny that was not funny i am Okay. This is interesting. He's got some content, Jared. So that's pretty good that you've got a lot of content already, which is very interesting. I like how I can jump into the app by my, without even like signing up. 
So that's a very good. I love the content that you already have. So from that perspective, like you've done a really good job of that. Let me see if I can. Okay. Yeah. Not only. So I love it. I love the flow. I love the way it, it's done with that perspective. And these are the type of apps that I always say like ASO is important because there are some keywords that you can go after, but at the same time, it's not like super important because you're going to need social media. You're going to need content. Like content is way more king on this type of app than ASO. Want to make sure I have content. You can probably need social media to drive more downloads for your particular app. Okay, cool. Any questions from anybody? Let me know. Oh, here. What? So Patrick asks, what everyone wants to know is how will IDF a changes affect UA when it comes when those changes happen. Patrick, we do have a couple of different episodes coming up when it talks about that. I think, you know, like this is why we love the app spaces. I'll answer it in a macro because I'm not an expert in IDFA, but I'll I'll answer it in a macro level and that is why I love the mobile space is because it's constantly changing, right? There are things that were working so well in 2010, 2013 13, 2014, 2015, and just aren't working anymore. And so just like that, everything will change too. Like for example, an Apple feature was worth hundreds of thousands of downloads if you got featured, but Apple changed things around. And so unless you're in the today tab and you get featured there, it's not worth it that much to get featured by Apple, right? It's hard for one, and two, like it doesn't drive as many downloads and quality of downloads are not as good as other channels. So things are constantly changing and I think that's just what is gonna happen as well. Aries, hi Steve, this is the first time I see your show live. Welcome Aries. How do I look? All right, cool. And Trade Plan is here. Hi Steve, awesome to join, awesome to have you as well. It's like people are coming in a little bit later today. All right, let's take a look at the next app and then we'll, maybe we can just bang out all these apps together. Let's see, Jasmine, are you there? Hey, can you hear me okay? Oh, I can hear you. Oh my goodness. Okay. I have to add you to the stream. Oh, cause I, I was, I was uh, wondering, I wasn't too sure. Do you know, you could have just jumped in and just said, hi. Oh, I was saying, Hey, but nobody was answering. So I was, gonna oh, say, I apologize. Live. Thanks for sticking out with us. Hey, did you want to add anything to that drip drop app? Uh, yes. You know, I actually think that that app will be good if they offer rewards. Cause I heard you mention something like that, like, um, watch videos and get paid. I think that's a really good selling point. And that's something that YouTube doesn't offer their viewers. So you watch a YouTube video and yes, you get entertained, but you don't get anything in return. Yeah. So on the drip drop app, if he says, okay, we're going to pay viewers or viewers who watch the video, the more time they waste, the more rewards that they can earn. And I think that will help draw in more people to uh, use the app. I like that. And I think, you know, what he does really well is, so I do actually recommend this. So Jared, maybe you've seen some of this, but on second open, you do notice that I was hit with this notification to leave a review and he's done pretty well at 39 with 4.8. And so I'm going to leave a review for you, Jared, because you're taking my advice in terms of like being aggressive with that. So that was second open. You don't know how many times people are going to come back. Like the seven day re retention rates are horrible. So on second open, it is better to just have the, re the review prompt because they probably like it, right? Jasmine or Zeno, like if somebody comes back to your app the second time, they probably like your app. They do. And you know, also I, I would tell them to take out the watch videos without being spied on. Mm. because I didn't figure out what that was until I went to the Twitter page. And he's pretty much talking about how they're not the TikTok, but unless I do that extra research, I have oh. no idea what that means. I see. That's a good point. I didn't even know that's what the branding was. That's too inside baseball, right? Like it's like, Hey, why would I know that? I'm not like mm -hmm. super into TikTok and all that stuff about the spying. Maybe some people do, but I didn't get that sense either. Yeah. But I think that can definitely be an interesting app though. Yeah. So let me properly introduce you. Well, now we finally got you. We can't get you on video, but we do have you audio and your knowledge through audio as well. 
ladies and gentlemen, like we have our special guest today that I was super excited to have on, <laughs> Zino Hitchin, and she is the co-founder and founder, I think, of, how do you say this, Giadaco Advisors? G Giadaco. Giadaco Advisors, they help, and I think it's just more than games too, but you, they help you identify revenue, monetization, and really talk about like, you know, I've been talking about this too, Zeno, is engagement hugely important before you think about growth or monetization, all that stuff. Engagement super important because that's going to really drive monetization. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and we, we focus on games, apps, and businesses. Growing your revenue is extremely important. As a business owner, I know how it, how it feels to start a business and it not making any money. And so that's something that we try to help other entrepreneurs with is find different strategies to increase their revenue. Yeah. And I know one of the big things that you actually want to discuss, you kind of touched on it with drip drop is providing real rewards for playing games as a way to monetize. Absolutely. I think that's one of the most underutilized, but it's one of the most powerful because if you look at casinos, that's essentially what they're doing. They're rewarding in-game play with real life rewards. So look at a, uh, a, FIFA a FIFA 20. What they did with Burger King was they put the Burger King logo on some of the, the on one of the teams and then players who completed certain levels, they were eligible to receive free food from Burger King. So that's another way that you can draw people into your app or your game, because especially now with the COVID, people are looking for free stuff. They're looking for different ways to earn money. Yeah. And then the one, the thing that you, this was actually when you put Rewardify, you know, this is actually a past client of ours. I know them pretty well, actually. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we, Rewardify has a, a game where they offer that. So that's that's pretty interesting. And then um, Skills.com, yep. I think they figured out how to do it on mobile. Other companies have have tried, but I think that they figured out the um, the, the formula and game developers can submit their game on, on skills.com. They'll review it. And then if they put it on there, you can I believe you can get money for some of the entry fees that players will will pay. Yeah, so it's match to win. We we had a client, Debbie. Deb, I, it's probably Deb. So don't, don't kill me, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> she probably, don't call me Debbie ever. But she, this is her app and they've done phenomenally well. Look at that. Now, almost 100,000 reviews, 63 in puzzle. And this is where they provide. And I know Demetrios, who's in the comments below, he has an app that's very similar to where he gives out real rewards. And then I've got another client called Gameform that is trying to do the same thing, but with casual games. So that was match three. And then Gameform is trying to, ah, it's so weird when they sometimes it goes to the app store, sometimes it goes yeah. to I can see it on the web. But game form is another one where client of ours, they are trying to do the same thing where they you can earn stuff. And this is through tournaments and stuff, but okay. you get real rewards. I I love games like that. And I love that concept because yeah. when I play a game to know that what I'm doing in that game, I can earn something in in, in real life. I I like that. Okay. Yeah, I like, I like that too. I think it's a great idea. Hey, Zeno, let me ask you this. Like, what is the, I guess, the big mistake that you see game developers make when they're trying to think, you know, maybe it's their thinking, maybe it's their mindset, but when they come to you and say, Zeno, please help me out. Like, what do you routinely say? Like, what's something that you always tell all game developers? Um, I, I would say use the free to play strategy. That is very important when it comes to, to building your game because that concept of giving it away for free and then it's if, a, if it is a good game people will come back to play more i think starting off trying to charge for the game is a mistake but that the free to play having players play for free up to a certain point and then charging them later on for more features is is one of the best strategies i could tell any game developer to start off with and then are there different mechanics? I completely agree with you because I think sometimes I hear this from developers and app developers too. They're like, you know, I tried the free to play model. Nobody was buying it. And so I just moved it to paid and then I was getting some money out of it. And so I just think that's like short-term thinking, not long-term thinking. What if that developer comes to you and say, Zeno, like I did try the free to play. Nobody was buying. Then I went to paid. Now I get a few dollars. I think it's short-term thinking like, but how would you fix that problem? 
I would say, um, f- for one, it may be the product. Like, is the is the product up to par? So free to play is a concept that, for for example, um, Candy Crush. They use that concept. Most successful games uses a free to play concept. So if it's not working for you, I would say go back and look at your game and evaluate that and maybe make some adjustments. Now, I believe on Apple, you are going to get players that are going to play for games, maybe just try it and test it out. But I think for the most part, a free to play concept should work for you. Yeah, I agree. And that's why these, that's why I like doing these audits because I think too many times developers get into this, their own world. This is great. And I seen this all the times, you know, where it's like, Hey, Steve, can you check out my game? Okay. I actually did this. Somebody did our premium app audits and he's like, Hey Steve. Okay. Now do this. Now go here. Now tap that. And I was like, look, (laughs) and I'm going to call him out. I was like, look, Nick, like settle down. Like, just tell me how to do something. Right. Like, Hey, go add a toy or go do this. Right. Let me try to do it and figure it out because then you're going to learn a lot more rather than you telling me tap here, tap there, tap there. You're not going to learn anything about how users are going to use your app. Say like create your own video, right? Like if I was drip drop and Jared, I'll be like, create your own for create your first video. And then let me try to do that because then you're going to learn a lot more about where I'm tapping versus you just saying, tap that plus button. Now sign up. Now, you know, put your camera reverse. It's like, you're not going to learn anything from there. (laughs) Oh yeah. Right. All right. Cool. All right. Let's get into our next app as questions come in as well. We've got Aiden. I just found your podcast. Great job. Excellent content. How do you decide what is in the podcast and what goes onto YouTube? Are you doing video podcasts? Aiden, most of the podcasts are just one-on-one interviews. So for example, Zeno and I might have a more private conversation, go into some of the tactics. And then the, the podcast, the audio form just lives on the podcast. Everything that we do on YouTube generally goes on the podcast too, because personally, I love to just listen to stuff. And so I throw everything on to the podcast. So the podcast is a great thing to subscribe to. And then we've got John. I'm going to call him John because, but hi, Steve. Some months ago, you audited my app. I learned a lot with you and I've changed so many things in my app for better. I can apply to you app audit again. Yeah, John, apply again and let us know like what happened with your app since we audited your app. Like, has it grown? Has it not grown? So I'd love to talk to you, John. Just reach out to me and hopefully you can do that. But for those watching, listening, if you want to check out the audit and add, get added to this list, appmasters.com slash audit is the website. We've got a premium version if you want to sit down with me one-on-one for an hour. All right, Rudy, what's happening? Hey, Rudy, I got to reach out to you. Let, let's let's figure out that search ad stuff. So let's let's plan some time for that, Rudy. But congrats. All right, let's go into our next app. You know, I'm so glad. And thank you. I want to say thank you for sticking it out. For the <laughs> first minutes I was on mute, I saw you. I was like, how come I can't hear you? But I didn't know I had to add you to a stream to actually hear you. So oh, I apologize. It's my that's fault. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Let's take a look at the next app. So Super Mama is the next app. And let me figure out the names. Andre, ASO and monetization. So that's why I picked you, Andre, because I had Zeno here for a monetization expert. So I was like, all right, I got anybody that said monetization, Zeno, I was like, okay, you're you're on. So I, <laughs> leap, I jump frogged or shortcut a lot of the people. All right, Andre. So Super Mama pumping tracker app breastfeeding and baby feeding. It's been a while since I've had to go, go through this with my kids, but yes, this is something that we used a lot of where we had a literal like paper and we're like, okay, this breast versus this breast. It's pretty crazy. Okay. Yeah, anyway, I, I heard of somebody doing that. Like, like the, the, the mother wrote down every single time she breastfed every t- single time she fed my yep. mom didn't do that, but <laughs> I've heard of other people doing that type of stuff. I don't think either of our moms did that, but <laughs> these days, yeah, we had to do that. We're like, oh, it's this one. And then now next time we got to go to the right, this one's the left, all that stuff. So it is something that is a real need for new moms. Okay. Log breastfeeding. So let's look at the ASO real quick and feel free to jump in anytime, you know. Okay. Uh, now the, the very, very first thing I do want to mention is the yeah. name um w- with the name i'm wondering if you know they can reevaluate the name just because i'm thinking this only for mothers but when i scroll down and i read the description it's really just for parents 
Mm-hmm. And so I'm wondering if if that has um if if they want to stick with that name or if they ever think about like readjusting that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, like super parent, something like that. Yeah, oh. something to make it more inclusive because if you're a male, I'm not sure, you know, if you're going to think this is something you can use. That's a great point because when I saw Super Mama, I I immediately like shut down and I was like, oh, I don't need this. You know? Yeah. Like it it is kind of weird. It's this weird psychology. Whereas if I saw just like, you know, super parent or whatever, right? And maybe just having a pumping tracker app, I think that's probably not the best keyword to go after. I think breastfeeding and baby feeding or newborn, those are probably keywords that I want to go after versus these ones that he's gotten. I think the screenshots are beautiful. Blog, I do too. Yeah. I, I did like the screenshots because I think it tells you exactly what you're going to be doing on the app. And I, I, I really did like that. Yeah. I remember we're doing this, like track diaper changes. You're like talking to the new parent out there. Cause I do remember being like, okay, but this was like, you know, I have to admit something. It was only for like the first week and it was only for our first baby. And so it was my f- new firstborn, my son. We're like so like cautious, like we had to track everything. But after a week, we're like, I think we got it. You know yeah. what I mean? So these type of apps, like I'm a little bit reluctant to be like, hey, this is great because it's such a short period of time that I'm going to be using it. And that- we're so anxious within that first week of a new kid. Whereas the second babies, you know, we're like, we got this. It's all good. Like, yep. we're good. That's, that's the thing. So it this app is going to be should be targeted directly to new, new parents because they don't know what to do. They don't know what do I need. But once you've done it for a while, you got the hang of it. I don't know if you're going to go back and use something like this. Yeah. And I think the longevity of this type of app for apps like these, like I might try to figure out, like for me, I'm definitely thinking about this as we develop new apps is what's something that somebody would want to use every day. And this is not the type of app that from a monetization longevity standpoint, like is going to, have that that long time use either yeah mm-hmm. yeah especially the way he's charging like uh, let's take yeah. a look yeah i saw that and i looked at one of their competitors huh? and one of their competitors they're charging the entire full version is 4.99 yeah. super mama for one month is 9.99 so they need to change their pricing i think so too and here we can pull it up do you remember what the competitor's name was? Uh, Baby Tracker. Baby Tracker. Okay, so like Super Mama, we can look at the stats right here. It's less than 5,000, not getting that many downloads. So let's look at Baby Tracker. Because again, this is an app that you probably, was it this one by any chance? I don't know if you can see that, Zeno. Um, let's just pull that up. Newborn log. But well, just as a comparison, right? They're dr- look at this. So they're getting eighty thousand downloads in August, but they only made six thousand dollars. Like it is something that is kind of like what we talked about. Like we would, we're super anxious. Like what I told you, it was only the first week that we were doing all that stuff. Maybe it was like the first two weeks, and then we just stopped because it's laborious. It's just too much. And you're like, I think I got the hang of this, right? Like we're good. And so I think. Yeah. 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 I was going to say they, they have a, like a year's, uh, you could uh, get like a year subscription mm. and I, I'm, I can't imagine anybody buying that. Cause I don't think they're going to need it for a year. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this, this is the, is this the one? Yes. This is the one I was looking at. Okay. Yeah. And they're only making about $6,000 a month and they've got so many great reviews, so many downloads, but yet just not converting. So that's a clear signal to you, Andre, that maybe this app isn't worth going after, but we'll take a look at some of your monetization real quick. Do you think Zeno pointed out already that, Hey, maybe not the year I'll say, boy, Noah, shout out to Noah. I won't put his real birthday. (laughs) That's just getting too much. (laughs) <laughs> you oversharing all right let's put how old is he it's 12 2000 oh look look at this so okay all right well let's just say he was more thing mm, later i couldn't go back too many times too many days which i don't know i don't know yeah i just think the pricing this is good like i like this page but again 
I don't know if I'm willing. I think what he's probably experiencing is people signing for a month and then canceling. So I might, I might just try one time, ten dollars, five dollars, whatever it is, and just go that way. Yeah, you know what? Also, I'm wondering if maybe they could add some more features just to mm -hmm. um, bring some more value to what they have to distinguish themselves yeah. from the other apps. So maybe if there's a way they can integrate the parents' data to the doctor or, you know, based off the data, can they tell you why your baby's crying or, or something just, just to increase their value? But I would almost try to go free and do some ads or try to do a partnership with a baby company or, or something. But um, the nine ninety nine is definitely going to have to change if they want to be competitive. Yeah. And you know what I, when I look at a page like this, uh, my, my thought is what's free versus what, what's paid is, yep. Yeah. Right. Like why do I want to pay? Like, I don't even know what I'm getting for the free version. And so the, the app that I always point to is this reflectly app. But I think they do it. Um, they should just sponsor the podcast, frankly. I always plug them. But essentially, like they, there's this section right here that says, you know, basic versus premium, which kind of gives me a sense of, okay, cool. Like I trust you now. Like, you know, this is embedded trust. Whereas here, I think it's great having this social proof, which is one of the elements that I always point to. But what do I get for free versus what do I get for paid? Yeah. So, think about Good that point. a little bit, Andre. All right, I'm going to jump out. Um, this is okay. I think there's a better way to do notifications. So, and I'm going to share that with you guys a little bit. Uh, love it. Okay. Yeah. Every, everything else looks pretty darn good. What I would also say is think about your monetization somewhere on this page too. Is, you know, this is what I experienced. Like on the homepage, that's probably the page that we always see, right? Like let's say, I was like, okay, cool. I like the app. I'm going to get out of it. Come back in. The homepage is the thing that we see all the time. So add your premium feature or your your buy button on here, right? Like this is you have all this space at the very bottom. See activities you can track with Super Mama app. That is a great opportunity to say go premium and get unlimited this or this 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 these benefits and try to upsell them through that because I bet you it's behind this hamburger thing. Yep. See, and we always hide it. We're always like, eh. Don't look for it, please. It's like, <laughs> right here. Just put it up. Just put it on the homepage. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let me get into some of the comments too. Uh, Andy, just love what you're doing. Many thanks. Can't wait to have you see. Thanks, Andy. We'll get to your app pretty soon. John says, I rebuilt the entire app. Better design experience, et cetera. I changed the model of free to premium. As you predict, almost anyone bought it. But yesterday I could sell a subscription for $50. So I'm suing John that you just sold a subscription for $50. And I want to say congratulations, man. That's awesome. That's hey, really congratulations. Awesome. That is pretty good. Nothing like the first subscription. Right? That, you know, yep. like, mm -hmm. oh, it feels it so feels good. Great. Like, yep. <laughs> all my hard work. It's actually point it's actually yeah. happening. All right. We I got just, about yeah, go ahead. I, I just uh listened to this audio book by 50 Cent, and he says that. Once you can get that, once one person is interested, then you know you have something. Like yeah. it's just validation for you. What's the audiobook? Uh, hustle harder, hustle smarter. I loved it. I, I finished it too. Yeah, it's eight hours, like eight hours long audio. It's really good. I, I read his it other is. book, The Fiftieth Law. I, I'm just a big fan of Fifty. After that, it's just oh, like, you know what? I got to read that. I did the Forty Eight Laws, but I haven't read the Fiftieth Law yet. I think it's a, I think it's called the 50th or 49th. I forgot what they called it, but him and Robert Greene. Yeah. Great writer. Amazing. Yeah. Writer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, well, we got 14 minutes, so I want to kind of make sure we hit on these apps because they're games and that's your expertise as well. So let me figure out who this person is. Virio. I don't know if they put in the name, but gameplay, user engagement, and store description. Okay. So gameplay. We'll get into that. The store description, I'll talk about that first. So one of the things that I think with the store description, like we've talked about it before, but keyword density is a key component, not the biggest component, okay? Not the biggest component, but it is a component. The other tip that I will give you guys that I got from AppTweak is, you know how SEO with Google, they like the H2, H1 tags? So guess what? We've been utilizing H2 tags 
Don't do it too often, but we've been utilizing H2 tags in the description. We've seen pretty good results with that. So definitely utilize that. If you know HTML, just put H2. I like to put bold B right in front of it too, just so that H2 looks like it's bold too. So I like, I've been playing around with H2 tags and definitely do that within the description as well. And we've seen pretty good results with that. All right. Zeno, let's get into the app itself. Now, I tried yeah. to download this game on my phone and my tablet, and I was not able to get this game at all. So um, I'm not sure if, if they have had any feedback on other people having trouble downloading this game. Well, I have it right here. So I'm not sure, but I did do it last night just, just to get it on my phone. It looks like, okay, mm, continue to install Game Center. Oh, okay. Well, I'll do that later. Cool. The graphics look amazing. Yeah. You know, I, I wonder um when I was when I was looking at the screenshots, because I still tried to go through that in the description. Like yeah. who who is the audience when they develop this game? Like is it is it more for a younger audience? Is is it for an older audience? Right. Yeah, I hate when people say this. It's so annoying to me. Best game ever. Like, why? Why? Yeah. Right. Like, of course, I'm going to say I'm the best game ever, but tell me why. And I don't like it when you say 100% free addictive game. Like, again, why? Right. Yeah. So I, with, I didn't like that either. Get ready for some action. I don't like what is it that makes you really different from everything else? Because I think if you even look at the voodoos of the world, they don't even have a description. Right. Like they just say this is what they just show you the gameplay and that's it. But they're they're using social media to drive. They're using ads to drive all the insults, so they see it. But like these are not good screenshots. No, I, it's hard for me to because I know they're they're saying that the game is like you can save the world, but in these screenshots, I don't see that. It, it doesn't look like that to me. So um, they definitely need to kind of go back in and and do some adjustments there. Right. And here's what I like to do. I like to read my positive reviews. Now these reviews could be fake because some of the reviews kind of sound that way. Well, I've never seen this kind of game was set at the beginning, but now I can't stop playing it. Nice one. What I, what I also like to do is look at my competitors. So I might click on this guy because they're just showing it up and then read through their positive reviews and see what people are liking about the game. Now, again, stay away from these generic terms like, addictive best because it doesn't really mean anything uh -huh. talk talk about like why why like just ask yourself why a couple of times and then you'll get to the those are the words that you'll get to okay yeah, and then too, this yeah. this almost felt like it was trying to be a serious game like, oh really it, yeah that's that's what it felt Let's like to it. me so, so i'm wondering if maybe they uh, should, should kind of consider moving this more to that field instead of an uh, entertainment game. Mm, yeah, like here, you're on a mission to save the world, kill the virus, and collect health tokens. Complete all 19 levels to win and be the superhero. <laughs> what do you think? I Do I have a future in voiceovers? Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I need a lot of positive reinforcement. I'm very insecure. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this feels like one of those games I grew up playing. It looks yeah. like I get hit with an ad. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's okay. I don't think, I think the gameplay could be improved upon. I think the biggest thing that I see, it's like, oh, yeah, it reminds me of it. But, like, how have you adapted to this? How have you adapted? from a similar gameplay that we're all used to. And it doesn't feel it's, like there's been any adap adaptation whatsoever. Yeah. They need to put their own like twist to it, their own flavor on it to really make it, yeah. really make it different than what's already out there. It's like a bad remake. It's like, all right. The, the thing that I would point you to Andre and for those who are, who are interested in that type of thing too, David Wright Shelt, we did a YouTube live stream, look it up as well. And he really talked about like, okay, taking color switch, from a very popular color switch one to color switch two. And then even color switch itself was an adaptation on another app, another game called flight and how he adapted that. And he was saying like the color switching mechanics from 
Uno and all these popular games like Simon. He's drawing inspiration from that and adapting that to the game Flight, which is very similar. It's just like you go through obstacles going up, but then he added the color switch element, which I thought was brilliant and just made a world of difference at a whole different dimension to the game that where Flight, after a while, you're like, hmm, okay, it's kind of boring, right? But where colors constantly switching, our mind loves that, that we love variety. Mm -hmm. if we're, if we're just constantly like moving our phone left to right it's just gonna get boring after a while like there's nothing to this i can't even go up so i'm all i'm doing is going left and right so after a while it's just all right, here's what i'm gonna do because here's what my son would do Boop. right yeah. <laughs> I, I, I definitely think they need to make some some uh more adjustments to the game before they could focus on before they should focus on anything else is getting the game kind of up to par a little bit yeah agreed agreed okay let's get into the last app and should plug in my battery at 23%. So I think it'll be okay. Andre said, hey, Steve, thank you for this awesome opportunity. You're welcome, Andre. Since the queue is long, I submit early, but the app should be added like September, October. <laughs> so Andre, <laughs> I apologize. Uh, we'll hopefully introduce all the features by then and might even go ASO. The areas I feel the weakest is the ASO monetization. Awesome. That's why I picked you. By the way, for the last question about premium audit, the third option would be not to say, oh, okay. All right. Well, it's up there, Andre, if you want to do the premium audit, but the app is out. It looks like, I'm going to make sure that you guys are seeing the screen too. Any comments, Zeno, that you want to start off with? I actually like this game. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I do like playing this game. Um, let's see, I'm looking at some of the notes I had. Um, uh, let's see. Well, while you do that, I can I can riff a little bit. The so I love the screenshots here, where it says pop bubbles. Like you're showing a gameplay that I already know, and then you rescue fluffy animals. There it is. Like there's a key differentiator. Like what is it that makes you different from the other ones? Because so now you're maybe targeting a different demographic that loves these cute little dogs and pets. It's like oh okay, boom. I get it. I know what your app is all about. You pop bubbles. It's I played this game before. And then here's the difference. You have these little cute little animals and then custom outfits. Like now you're starting to talk about it. So I love all of this right here. This is great stuff. I do too. And I, I love the story that they have in the description um, where they tell about the, the girl that's trying to find a lost pest, this and that. So I think they did a really good job with that. Right. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Let's get into the app and then maybe any comments you have. You know what's interesting, you know, is I don't know why the two apps I downloaded yesterday that we're auditing, their icons are a little bit different than like all the other icons that I have, like Instagram, Peloton. Like, I don't know why they're full. You know, you see how this is a full circle versus like these are like, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know. <laughs> Not Android guy, but okay. Really? So, I love Android. <laughs> really? I've been. I've been saying that I was going to switch because this phone's like 150 bucks. I'm like, this phone oh. is ridiculous. And this, I mean, I'm, I've been enjoying this phone so much more. So, yeah. <laughs> That's All right. Let's, let's play. Now, I did view some of their competitors. Um, mm -hmm. And I know they're looking for monetization. One of their competitors because when you're playing the game, you could swap out like the bubbles and then you have a son that's supposed to like be able to pop more bubbles. Uh -huh. One of their competitors actually charges for that and uh -huh. they didn't. Now, maybe if you get more into the game, um, they may charge, but as far as I got, I didn't see that they charge for anything. So maybe they should look into doing something like that for uh -huh. unlocking that feature, those features. I'm I'm having trouble. Okay, mm, the shooting feels a little bit weird. So here's what's happening. I'm trying to show it, but I'm trying to shoot, but it keeps rotating. Yeah, it that's that happened to me too. When you're trying to aim, it switches the color to something. Yeah, yeah, that happened to me too. So I think my this is why it's so beneficial just to see people playing with your game, Andre is. The bottom, whoops, I don't know why you guys only see except, and I'm seeing the play. Let me see if I can get out of this a little bit. Uh, hmm. Ah. 
This is why, okay, let me see. It's not showing up anymore. Let me try to mm -hmm. remirror this. But anyways, the, the, I would say the switching, Andre would know this, just make it a tap. Like I tap on the little switching thing and that way it switches. Whereas if I'm gonna be like dragging and stuff, then allow that to be the, the aiming, not the switching. So let's see if this works. And from a monetization standpoint, Zeno, like I always feel like you're, you're right. The custom stuff, like, you know, obviously this is the first time playing. So here, and you guys can see this too. Boop, 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 okay. So here, I keep trying to aim and it keeps switching. So I'm recommending that just make this tap right here that changes colors rather than me aiming. So anything that I do here will be, see, I'm trying to, trying to aim and it keeps switching is crazy, which would just drive me nuts. Fix that, that it, right? it drove me nuts. <laughs> Fix that before you think about any monetization. Well, it looks, it looks like we can tap anywhere. Oh, okay. It makes it easier though. If I can tap anywhere. Oh, yep, yep. I don't like that. I don't like this at all. I don't like I it if I can tap anywhere. It makes it so much easier. What, uh, oh. Panda, they, uh, they have another competitor, Panda something, and the Panda sits there and it just throws it in the air. So it, they should consider something like that too. And like the color switch is like somewhere in the corner. So maybe they can kind of um, look at that. And here's a great opportunity to put a rewarded video. Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you earn this many coins or whatever it is. Want to double it? Watch a quick video. Yep. It is awesome. Or earn a great bonus. You know, what I always say is daily bonuses are great. It's great for retention. It's great for monetization mm -hmm. because you can get people to come back like, oh, and you know, like have Day two day bonus is 100 coins. Day three bonus is 300 coins, so forth. People come back. And then when they come back, you say, you want to double your daily bonus by watching a video? That's a great way of doing it, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, I agree. Also, um, if they have, I'm not sure if they consider just advertising to like a banner or, or something. Yep. To try to increase that revenue. I believe one of their competitors has that. I like that idea, too, because I think just for the pure benefit of being able to remove it and you can run a couple mm -hmm. of different growth hacks using that campaign to remove a banner ad so i like it and you don't have to put it during the gameplay you can just put it in that main screen that banner because it's disruptive enough a little bit to be like oh okay you know absolutely I'll, it's not super disruptive and you don't probably want to see it on this particular gameplay i was trying to see something else if i can figure out monetization here again Great opportunity to double up, but on also, the also, um, if yeah. they could, if they can make the game a little bit more challenging, maybe like add a timer on there or mm. something, because right now it's it's way too easy. And if I'm being cheap, I could just say, okay, I'm gonna just keep playing it until I get what I need, and I mm -hmm. won't have to buy anything. Or you maybe know, like the bubbles can like come down or something could, while you're throwing the bubbles, something else could be roaming around adding more bubbles and you have to hurry up and pop all the bubbles before the timer or, or something like that. Yeah. And I like it. I agree with you. And I, I like the, the gem stuff. Another great opportunity, right? 99 cents or watch a video and I get some, some rubies, right? Like this is a great opportunity for you, Andre, to try to monetize with this. It's, this and then this timer i don't like timer kind of like what you're saying Zeno. i don't like timer make it so that i can play like five times for instance right like i have this stamina i did this video like try this if you're not monetizing your game so search for that on youtube but i go into a a game that has stamina and then when you run out of stamina guess what i can watch a video to play more so stamina is like i you know to play this level i have to give you three gems and then obviously I'm gonna run out of gems or I can wait the same time. So it's the same time concept, but I, instead of a time, I have number of quantity and then that quantity goes down. Cause I could probably like, how many, how long am I gonna play? I've got like 24 minutes left. I'm not gonna play for 24 minutes, right? You have to expect that I'm gonna play for like maybe 10 minutes and leave. So how much can I get through in that time frame and still win? So I would probably do quantity of the stamina rather than time. Okay. That's an interesting point. And, and 
like when I meant time, I meant like for when it comes to popping the bubble, like you only have like 10 seconds left or 20 seconds or something like that. Sorry, I got to plug in. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that point too. That like it is, it would be more fun because a lot of those bubble games used to have the time. Like things would be falling if you didn't pop them yeah. all. And, but this one doesn't. So I think that was great feedback. All right, let's get into some of the questions and we'll say goodbye and have a good weekend. We'll see you next week. We've got Andy, my friend. What is a good analytics tracker service for Android and Apple apps? If I want to track mine from day one, do you know the prices? Andy, if you're going to be more on the affordable level, I would say Firebase is a great one. But then as you level up, or even Facebook, the analytics, because it's all free. And then as you level up, you can look into more of the advanced tools like Adjust or Apps Flyer. But then as a good starting point, before you scale up, Firebase is a great option. Anything you want to add, Zeno? I love Facebook. Um, I, I would definitely say go with, go with Facebook. Yeah. It's called Adaptive Icons, Iris. I don't know what you meant, Iris. Oof. Okay. Not sure what you mean by that, Iris. Leandro, I got to give you a shout out. Thank you, Leandro. At Masters Podcast, the best app marketing podcast. Andro, I mean, Leandro, don't tell us. Thank you. I appreciate that. It means a lot to me. But also leave it on iTunes. At masters.com slash iTunes. Let the world know. All right. And then Andy said, I'm going to start my app as a freemium sort of thing. Is that a good move in the beginning? Yes. And so we had a video with Chad Moretta. We talked about this. Freemium is way better. I do think you want to charge, in my opinion, and Zeno jump in anytime, but you want to test within that first 1,000 downloads and users if some people are buying. Because if nobody's buying, you have a huge problem, right, with your product. Like Zeno said earlier in the conversation, you have a huge problem with the, the, the product. So I think freemium with some monetization just to see how many people do subscribe. Yeah. I would, I like freemium. I like freemium. I like free, uh, free to play, but I'm also with experimentation. You don't have to just do one thing and, you know, stick with this experiment with different strategies. Cause you're able to, and see which one works best for you and your game. Yeah, definitely. All right. If you guys got any questions below, we've got a few more minutes left. Make sure you leave it in the comments below, but Zeno, thank you so much. If the audience, if you want to follow up, look, it is Zeno's website is linked up into the YouTube description. So go check them out. If you have a game you're struggling with, you're like, what can, should I do next? You heard it here. You got a glimpse of what she can do with your game. But if you're trying to figure out like what to do with your next, with your game, your app, even your website, she's going to help you out. Her website is linked below. Zeno, if the audience wants to follow up with you and connect with you in any other way, do you want to send them anywhere else? Um, no, that's fine. They can go to my website, jedaco.com slash advisors, or I'm also on LinkedIn. They can find me on LinkedIn as well. Okay. And those links are in that YouTube description already. So go connect with her. If you got anything out of this, just thank her on LinkedIn. Zeno, you got to come back. Apologize for the technical difficulties, but yeah. you got to come back anytime <laughs> you want to do this. You got to open invite, but I appreciate you coming on and doing this. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And, and hopefully next time we won't have as many uh, technical difficulties there. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching. Next week, we are going to talk all about TikTok influencers, how to leverage that TikTok platform. I know it might be banned in the US, but how do you leverage TikTok influencers? We've got a great guest for you guys from Incipia. So I'm super excited to be talking to her next Friday. We're going to talk all about that and obviously be auditing your app. And if you want your app audited, go check out appmasters.com slash audit. And let's see if there's one last comment that we have. Rudy says, by by the way, speaking of watching ads, I'm implementing rewarded ads and geometry solver. Oh, cool. It turned out that students are the biggest group. So maybe they rather temporarily unlock a lock shape than paid. Rudy, that's awesome, man. Let us know how that goes. You got an open invite to come back anytime too and share some of the feedback that you've been working on. Thank you guys for being here. We'll see you next week. Same time, same bat channel. Zeno, thank you so much for joining. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You do too. <laughs> Bye.